Hey guys, you're watching Car Topic, and today we're going to be talking about the family Ferrari. But before we get into the video, I just want to apologize for my last video actually, where I called Porsche a Porsche. I now understand that this is incorrect pronunciation, and trust me, I won't make that mistake again. Hopefully for this video, I pronounced Ferrari correctly. But enough of that, let's get on with the video. So today, we're going to be talking about the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso. Much like you guys, I actually didn't know much about this car until researching for this video. I actually found out this car existed when Ferrari's F1 drivers came up to the track in a Ferrari GTC4 Lusso. And if it's not clear already, this car has four seats. And not only is this Ferrari the only Ferrari with four seats, but it's also the only Ferrari with all-wheel drive, except for the Ferrari FF. The Ferrari FF also has four seats and has four-wheel drive, but that's because it's the predecessor to the GTC4 Lusso. One thing to note about Ferrari is that they don't refresh cars as much as they do replacing them. This means that when the GTC4 Lusso gets old, like the Ferrari 458, it'll get replaced just like the Ferrari 488 did to the 458. The Ferrari GTC4 Lusso started at 602 horsepower for the standard trim, but went all the way up to 680 horsepower for the V12 wagon trim. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a lot of prancing horses. Now, it's pretty clear that that's a ton of horsepower, but if you own a Bugatti and you think that's chump change, let's take a look at the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso's closest competition. The 2014 Cadillac CTSV wagon has 556 horsepower, 124 less than the Lusso. The 2020 Mercedes AMG E63 S wagon has 603 horsepower, 77 less than the Lusso. And the only real competition that would prove to be a tough competitor for the Lusso is the 2020 Porsche Panamera E-Hybrid Sport Turismo Turbo S. <sighs> oh, I did it. Okay. This Porsche has 677 horsepower giving it only three horsepower less than the Lusso. And it's not just these figures that are similar between them as well. They both have similar weight and are within 0.3 seconds of each other in the quarter mile. So when it comes down to these two cars, it's really up to your preference, Porsche or Ferrari. So you're probably thinking, with all of this horsepower and all of this speed, there's no way that the back seats are comfortable. I mean, it, it must just be like the back seats of a 911. Well, think again, because people over six feet tall have said that they can easily spend 45 minutes plus in the back seats of a GTC4 Lusso. So you might be thinking, fine, okay, the back seats are comfortable, but that probably means that those seats eat into the trunk space. There's no way that this is a practical car. Well, I'm gonna have to ask you one more time to think again, because with the back seats up, this has easily over 15.8 cubic feet of storage. And if you put the back seats down, you have over 28.4 cubic feet of storage. That's more than a Toyota Corolla. So just to recap, you can probably go to a race with this car and have a ton of food in your trunk for your barbecue later and have your kids in the back watching some YouTube and still win the race. But don't let the fact that this is a special Ferrari make you think that anything is different for the driver as every single one of the features that you'd find on their top of the line supercar is right there for the driver's ease. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you learned something about the family Ferrari. Um, I apologize once again for calling Porsches a Porsche, and that won't happen again. But just thank you so much for all the support that I've been getting on the last videos. And 
If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. I will be uploading tomorrow as well as every Tuesday and Thursday. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time on Car Topic.